music on it down Oxford Street and the officer in charge, he continued to harass me. He told me to go faster and uh, there was a gap developing in the procession and uh, I wanted to slow down, I wanted to stop. And he said, don't stop, if you stop, he said, I'll uh, disband this parade, It'll, I'll declare it illegal and you'll all be arrested. I had this memory of it just getting more and more tense. I, my memory of it is my hairs, the back of my neck were getting to, getting to bristle. This was this wasn't feeling very good. And I remember talking to a few people as we walked down about how meeting at Hyde Park wasn't a great idea. When I joined the Mardi Gras, I was a bit late. And there was, there was definitely a sort of uh, zip in the air. I mean, people were uh, high a bit with um, the music and being out in the open. And, uh, and they were also angry, angry at that stage about the police. As I got out of the car, I could see the police were trying to drag the driver of the truck with the loudspeaker and all the people on the back, trying to drag him out of the vehicle. So there was a fight going on <laughs> with the police already. And then the people grabbed my legs and say there was a tug of war between the police and the uh, people who were at the, uh, taking part in the Mardi Gras. And the, uh, the crowd won, because at that stage there was only a handful of police and there were um, about a thousand or more of, you know, us. The feeling in the crowd, because we were celebrating, was, well, OK, we will go and celebrate somewhere else. You're telling us there wasn't even a clear direction from the police that we want you to disband. They basically just wanted to just start getting aggressive with people. So people within the crowd said, well, we'll go up to the cross. My paranoia didn't really start until we were halfway up. Real paranoia didn't start when we halfway up William Street when we saw all the paddy wagons. Um, going across Darlinghurst Road and Victoria Street, we just watched them, you know, paddy wagon after paddy wagon. Um, and we knew then there was going to be a problem. And I can look down William Street at these hundreds and hundreds of people and they were chanting, you know, stop police attacks on gays, women and blacks. Um, very strong chanting, you know. So I thought, my God, it's already a demonstration. <laughs> We um, made our way up to the cross. By that stage, people were down at the Alala Main Fountain. and the police had closed off Maclay Street, cordoned off Maclay Street. And after the uh, demonstrators had moved into the cross itself on Darlinghurst Road, the police closed off the other end. The police came and they really had us cornered in that sort of area around Alala Main Fountain. They said, OK, it's an illegal march, you know, you have to disperse now. Well, we tried to disperse, but there was nowhere to disperse to. And that's when the police came in quite heavily and decided that they were going to start arresting us. So a few minutes later, all these paddy wagons arrived. We were happy to go home, and people had started to walk back down Darlinghurst Road to go home, but the police were basically surrounding everybody. They weren't allowing people to disperse. They were surrounding people and basically squashing them. And that, that, um, that's what they did. Police vehicles came from the front and hit the front of the crowd. Um, I could see these very bright lights and uh, the people walking were silhouetted against them. And then I saw people being uh, struck by police, knocked to the ground, being kicked, um, maybe 30 or 40 metres in front of me. Um, so in my mind, I thought, well, it's on now. And when they uh, threw peop uh, put people into the back of the, the vans, they uh, held the door open and they threw people in so that they smashed up in, against the, uh, the, the metal inside the vans. They threw them in really viciously. So it was a mayhem and there were people bashing the sides of the police vans, rocking them, trying to tip them over. There were garbage bins flying through the air. Um, it was a really wild night. There was a lot of emotion, a lot of anger, justifiable anger too. You know. My strong impression was that a lot of bystanders on Darlinghurst Road that night also joined in fighting the police. They were definitely on our side. They definitely sympathised with us against the police. So someone had pulled the cork out of the bottle and the police were, I think, dealing with a lot more than they had expected. I think the police always thought that gays were just a, a walkover anyway and that we wouldn't fight anyway. 
Um, but then they had <laughs> all these other citizens as well fighting them. So they got more than they bargained for. I had uh, the police on one side and the women holding me on, to the, on the other side and trying to pull me away from the police. And I was dragged across underneath this door for the paddy wagon. I actually fell to the ground. And what was really interesting is that the police that were there at that time leant over me. One of the guys leaned over me and he said, piss off quickly into the crowd. He actually let me go. Then three people came to my aid and they were pulling my legs and pulling my jumper and pulling my arms. And I remember really clearly telling them to fuck off and leave me alone, please. I didn't want my jumper ripped. Um, and uh, I also didn't want my arms ripped out of my sockets. And they let me go and I got arrested. Um, and so we then sat and watched everybody else getting arrested from the paddy wagon. We ran to the people who were on the ground and started grabbing them to pull them to the side and away from the police. And um, unfortunately, I, I had someone by the arm and I went straight into a police officer who threw me bodily into a wagon. So my glasses were gone and I was in a paddy wagon in a flash, really. And uh, the noise was deafening, um, even from you know, in an enclosed space in the wagon. There was a lot of banging, a lot of screaming and shouting. A tremendous noise, and uh, I, I myself thought that the police, you know, was you know, it was a dreadful assault, really, they were undertaking, but I thought, well, I wonder if they can handle this. I bet they didn't expect this. There were about 50 or 55 people arrested. I think uh, there are at least 30 women within that. Darlinghurst Police at that time had a fairly aggressive um, reputation. So we were concerned as to how they would be treated when they got to the police station. They just reversed the, the van into a yard and uh, the door opened and this, uh, this policeman was screaming. Uh, so he pointed his finger at the other three and he said, you know, you, you and you out, you know, and you stay you know, to me, so. For me, there was a few people there who I thought the cops are new and wanted, wanted to get because they were too proud. They were too too strong, they were too um, too defiant, and I think Peter was one of them. And Darlinghurst were pretty quickly shunted into a cell, which was, my memory was pretty small, and there was an awful lot of us. And I remember most of my emotion of being absolutely terrified about what was going to happen next. So they took those three away, and then he came back to me, and he was, he was extreme, he was off his face, this man, you know. So as he's screaming, you can't, you know, get out of there and uh, took me down this long passageway. I think I must have walked through, through the whole the Darlinghurst police station, that level, and into a room. And um, I wasn't, I was sort of thinking, oh, it's not so bad, you know, I um, haven't been hit by anybody. You know, soon after we got there, or well, maybe it was a couple of hours after we got there, you could hear someone being bashed up. And it was just this horror about, are they going to go through all the boys and bash them first and then start on us? What's going to happen? I was in, I was in this uh, room and he just turned me around and whacked me right in the face. Started, he was screaming, you're not uh, so smart now, are you? Uh, when you're by yourself, you little shit, you know, all, all this language. And, but every, he was just hitting me all the time. So. I don't know how long that went on for, five minutes or ten minutes, I'm not sure. It seemed like a few seconds, actually, uh, in my memory. But um, I was struck many times in the head and uh, then a very strong blow here in my stomach and <clears throat> enough to put me on the ground. And um, uh, then he tried to break my leg by kicking the lower part of my leg. And by then I was... Um, going into convulsions and I was, I'd piss my pants and I was starting to shit myself and I didn't, I thought I was just about gonna die, I, was, I think, you know. Someone stopped the policeman after he kicked me in the leg and they must have seen my body start to flap or something so um, they stopped him and uh, then it was like, get on your feet, you know, ah, oh, you don't, you can't walk, hey, you know. Uh, they were, they were just so cruel. It's almost like I can still hear Peter Murphy being bashed. It was the sound of the blows and Peter screaming. 
It was that sort of bizarre. I mean, you could actually hear the blows um, and Peter screaming. Um, and it didn't, it went on for ages. Well, it seems like it went on for ages. And you, when it stopped, you just weren't sure who they were going to start on or whether they were bashing someone else somewhere else and you just couldn't hear them. And every time they came down, you thought, well, maybe they're going to start on us. Somehow or other, I was dragged to a cell and put into a cell by myself. Um, so I was able to just gather, gather myself a little bit. I was terribly concussed and uh, shaken and... Uh, um, I could hear, after not too long, I heard people outside calling my name. So uh, people had marched up to the police station, those who hadn't been arrested, and um, were having a sort of vigil outside, but they were calling... <sighs> the people were... <coughs> calling out, you know, who bashed Peter Murphy. So, I was really um, glad somebody was out there. We were out the front of Darlinghurst Police Station chanting. I think we felt that we wanted the people inside to know we were out there. Um, that in a sense the police were being observed and that that might, you know, moderate some of their excessive behaviours. I was, I'm sure I was crying a lot in the cell, <laughs> but I did gather myself together um, and I had to wait and just see what happened next. And uh, they did take me eventually and put me in the dock, which was crammed with everybody else. The police were not allowing anyone access to the cells. They were not allowing anyone access to any legal or medical support. Uh, they weren't for some hours letting us know whether they would even be setting bail, what that bail would be. So we set about trying to raise as much money as possible. Eventually, um, a, doctor, a doctor who I knew, Jim Walker, was able to come into the police station and I was, um, he was able to examine me in another big room and there was a very senior police officer present. He had junk all over his shoulders in his uniform. The ones who bashed me were also there. And Jim said that I should be taken to a, a hospital immediately, um, but they, they, they said no. So uh, I was put back in the dock. It's one of those occasions when you know it's not safe being gay, when you knew it was foolish to think that the society had changed. <laughs> 